today we head to the Gospel of Matthew, the first book of the New Testament. Matthew was one of Jesus' disciples. He was one of those 12 guys who followed Jesus around to learn from him and carry out his mission. Matthew wrote down his experiences with Jesus to help others believe that Jesus was the one God promised to come and save the world. And so as we get started, I need you to pay attention. Throughout the story today, I'll be asking you some trivia questions, and if you get them correct, we'll get a chance to reveal part of our puzzle on the game board. So all of these squares you remove will reveal a picture for you to take 10 seconds and try to decipher. So we'll get the whole puzzle by the time the story is over, and that's going to reveal our special, mes special message. Here we go. For hundreds of years, people have been waiting for the Messiah, a savior, one who the prophets of old had foretold would come and save everyone. And every year, the people of Israel celebrated Passover, a feast and celebration to thank God for their freedom from slavery. Here's your first question. Where were the Israelites held as slaves? Was it A, Jerusalem, B, Egypt, or C, Canada? And the answer is Egypt, although it would be a completely different story if it was Canada. So, like I said, every year they celebrated being saved from slavery. And every year they looked forward to being saved again, but this time it was by the Messiah. The city of Jerusalem was buzzing with this year's Passover celebration because word had spread that this year someone would be coming. Jesus. People were talking about his miracles, his teachings, his compassion, but not everyone was totally thrilled with him or his claims to be the Son of God. Uh, the religious leaders didn't think Jesus was all that. As they all approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage. So here's your next question. This town was on a very specific mountain ridge named after what most people think is a vegetable, but is technically a fruit. Is it A, the Mount of Artichokes, B, the Mount of Durian, or C, the Mount of Olives? Great job! It's actually the Mount of Olives, which means we get to reveal numbers three and four. Back to the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus sent out two disciples. He said to them, go to the village ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a donkey tied up. Her colt will be with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Speaking of colts, here's question number three, a totally random one. The NFL team, the Colts, is based in what city? Is it A, the Indianapolis Colts, B, the Annapolis Colts, or C, the Acropolis Colts? That's right, it is the Indianapolis Colts. Great job, we're gonna find out more about where this phrase is going toward the end of our story. So let's keep going. Matthew 21, three tells us that Jesus went on to say, if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. The owner will send them right away. Now, the disciples had no idea what Jesus was doing had a purpose. Matthew tells us there was an important reason behind getting these donkeys. So let's keep reading. This took place so that what was spoken through the prophet would come true. It says, Say to the city of Zion, See, your king comes to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey. He is riding on a donkey's colt. All right, here is trivia question number four. Who was the prophet in the Old Testament who originally said Jesus would ride on a colt? Was it A, Zimbabwe, B, Zechariah, or C, Zandu? You, 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 you. Actually, the answer is B, Zechariah. So that lets us take care of numbers five and six. Absolutely. The verse that we just read is from Zechariah 9, 9. Well done. The disciples went and did what Jesus told them to do. If they knew anything about Jesus, they knew that it was probably best to just go along with what he was telling them to do. He always had a plan, and it almost always worked out in a way that they couldn't see or sometimes even understand. So they did what he asked. They brought him the donkey and the colt and put their coats on the back for Jesus to sit on. In the town, a very large crowd had gathered, and they were preparing the way for Jesus to come. Matthew writes this, A very large crowd spread their coats on the road. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And that brings us to question number five. 
What holiday is named for the type of branches that the people cut down and placed on the road? Is it A, Oak Sunday, B, Palm Sunday, or C, Poison Ivy Sunday? We have any idea? C, no, I'm just kidding. It's B, Palm Sunday. So that takes care of, are we on 9 and 10? I don't think Poison Ivy Sunday would be a big hit with the crowds. It was palm trees, so Palm Sunday it is. The religious leaders didn't like this one bit, though. After all, the people were supposed to listen to them, not to this upstart from Nazareth. So let's keep reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Some of the people went ahead of him, and some followed. They all shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Let's go ahead and look at question number six. David is a pretty important person in God's big story, but who was the king before David? Was it A, King Paul, B, King Saul, or C, King Meatball? <laughs> king, <laughs> it rhymed, King Meatball. No, it was King Saul, that's right, King Meatball. I, he was one saucy king, wasn't he? But of course, it was B, King Saul. Now, back to the story. Upon Jesus' arrival, people were shouting and praising and clapping and yelling and singing and generally just carrying on. Crowds had spilled out onto the streets. People were excited. This is what they had been excited for. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. The people asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus. They also said what town Jesus was from in Galilee. Which brings us to question number seven. What town was Jesus from in Galilee? Was it A, Nazareth, B, Nazareth, or C, Nazar, Nazar, Frank, and Hammerville? I like C. But the answer is, do I know the answer? Do I know the answer? Do you know the answer? C, Frank, and Hammerville. No, Jesus was from Nazareth, spot on. And I really don't know what number we're on, but they're just going to disappear anyway. So honestly, though, not everyone was totally thrilled with the response Jesus was getting. The religious leaders were pretty peeved that Jesus was getting this kind of attention. And they basically thought, who does Jesus think he is anyways? A celebration? A parade? Crowds lining the streets? Good grief! These people might actually start listening more to this Jesus character than to us. And they started to kind of grumble. They started to complain and they told him point blank, teacher, tell your disciples to stop. But Jesus told them, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Wow, Jesus basically said that there isn't anything these religious leaders could do to stop all of creation from celebrating. It actually wasn't the first time Jesus put the religious leaders in their place. He totally lets them have it later in Matthew chapter 23. But before we get there, question number eight. Jesus took the religious leaders to task and called them a few choice names. What was the one name Jesus didn't call the religious leaders? A, a, a broad of vipers, B, blind fools, or C, boomers. What do we think? What do we think? The vipers one's a little weird, right? Right? No, the answer to number eight is, that's right, boomers. Okay, now that all of the board is revealed, let's take a look. Can anyone figure out the puzzle that I've created? Can we decipher it? Do we know what it is? So the answer is, you can celebrate even when you're waiting. God's people were waiting for years for Jesus to come. And God came through with something uh, way beyond what they had ever dreamed. God keeps his promises. And even when you're waiting, you can celebrate how much God has helped you in the past and that you can trust God with your future too. So the people celebrated while they waited. Every year for Passover, they ate, they drank, they laughed, they reminisced, they praised God, and they celebrated. In the town of Jerusalem, they prepared for Jesus' arrival. They celebrated. And when he rode into town, as the prophets foretold, it was a celebration like no other. One thing to remember is that God is still working while you're waiting. It's not like he takes a day off. He's still moving, still working, and still listening. 
I truly believe one of the hardest things to learn for you, for me, and for anyone is to be present in the moment, right here, right now. Too often we're stuck in the past wishing things turned out differently or stuck in the future hoping things will turn out a certain way. The truth is that we don't have control over either of those things, past or future. But what we do have control over is how we're living right now in the present. That's because we can trust God no matter what. God's working while you wait. And instead of focusing on what you're missing or what you wish could happen, celebrate what God is doing in your life right now. So our key question for the week, what are you waiting for right now? Is it good news? Is it an end to the pandemic? For school to be over? Whatever it is, don't forget that God is with you while you wait and he is working. And the waiting is worth it.